looking at a big fat Corydoras. They're so cute though, the stir by. Ugh. There you go. Welcome everyone. We are starting the uh, Monday night live stream. A whole stream. minute early. It's a minute early, trying to catch people off guard, and the mics are working too. Mm. That's right amazing. off the start. But no one's here. <laughs> That's good. There's two people. Fish guy. And You're guy. welcome. Everything's going smoothly so far. Mm -hmm. I wonder what that means. I don't know. Let's we shall uh, see. pop up here. There we are. Mm -hmm. Yep. There we are. Who else? I got perfect. What? Okay. What? Corridor is stir by. <laughs> there you go. Yep. Ben Sharp, happy Monday to you too. As always, we're going to give it a few minutes for everyone to roll in here and then we're going to talk about. What's up, Dave? Again. Top dwelling fish. Yes, we are. We've done this before. We <laughs> did this topic about three years ago, so I thought we'd revisit. This is good to circle back, isn't it? Uh, We're here. Hello, Caitlin, again. Oh, Arlo. Oh, we didn't put the... Hmm. Look who uh, it that'll is. happen. Look who it is. It's like right on cue, because if we weren't doing Hello. this, we would be over. <laughs> Help is on the way. I can't help myself. I'm sorry. If anybody ever says hello in any way like Mrs. Doubtfire, they'll be met with that response from me. Hello, Matt. I'm more of a <laughs> bottom dweller. Well, we're actually going to be doing that one in two weeks. Mm. Math is hard. Next week, we're going <laughs> to do middle of the water column, and then the week after, we're going to do bottom dwellers, which would be more appropriate for the video behind me, but... Hey. I'll be sure to get some top dwellers when we do a bottom yeah. dwellers. It's opposite day. Yep. Hello, Leslie again. Mel. Audio, video, good. There we go. Well, Mel. this is bizarre. How bizarre? Uh, what Lily says. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> How does your child fart? That, that, that. <laughs> I don't know. Well, not, but yeah. But not. He said, Hello. Hello. Wait, what idea? We're taking an idea. So you're going to take my idea, I see? Uh, um, I don't know. Did I miss something? I clearly missed something. I probably said it and then already forgot. Arlo. Arlo, so go I'm, lay down. I'm being assaulted by a nose. Go lay down. I know, buddy. I'm sorry. Later. The stream started on time. We actually started a early. A minute early. On time. Go lay down. No, we were early. Go lay down. Okay. Well, well, you have three golden wonder killies and one gardener eye. Nice. Funny you should mention that Funny because indeed. that's on our list. Show sure enough. We're each going to roll through a couple species here. I don't know why this video is in super slow motion. I kind of but... like it. I don't know. I'm not mad at that. Oh, now it's gone. Look at the drama. I want the drama there. <laughs> I want to know what this idea is. going to give it another minute and then we'll get going here. Yeah. Let people, everybody needed a potty break. Hey there, spot on. Hey, <laughs> I speak good, good Swede. Good job, good job. <laughs> uh, okay, Bob is a little slow now. It was a joke. I was calling myself a bottom dweller, which he missed. Then he said he's doing that in two weeks, so I am ah. claiming that as there my you go. idea. Got it, thank you. Sorry that I had to make you explain it. I hate that. <laughs> I hate when I can't just get something. Do you get it now? Or should I explain it again? He, he, I'm sure you're going to explain everything to me for our whole lives, even though that's okay, Greg. Yeah, audio normally starts now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, you guys had to hear the first couple minutes. That must be rough. Yes, yeah, so let's just uh, let's get you know, right into it. Let's get into it. Get popping. Get into it. Who's I'm gonna going first. I'm gonna lead off with some okay. gnarly, gnarly looking hatchet fish here. Oh my god, I want one. <laughs> I think uh, that's what I said when he showed me. I want one of those. Yeah, I mean, it's pretty sweet. <laughs> Look at that thing. It looks you can't terrifying. go wrong with hatchet fish. Terrified can you? or terrifying? Like, I don't know. All right. If you don't know what hatchet fish are, these are hatchet fish. Oh. This is what we're talking about. I believe this is going to be a platinum, but I could be wrong. I think you're right. Uh, hatchet fish. There's many different. There's a marbled hatchet fish. Um, there's dwarf hatchet fish. There's all kinds of hatchet fish. I think the marbled are beautiful. Uh, in my opinion, this is the ultimate top dwelling fish it's, it's it doesn't get any better than this for a fish that hang out at the top because they only hang out at the top this is true. whereas other top dwellers well they'll venture around to the bottom mid 
mid water, you know, here and there. But for the most part, these are always going to stay on top. You can also feed these uh, like springtails, which is kind of fun, which not every fish keeper is going to have springtails, but uh, we do because we have reptiles. And <laughs> it's, it's fun watching them pick off little bugs that hop across the surface of your water. It's pretty neat. Uh, that yes, being said, is. they are jumpers. If there's Oof. anything you need a lid for, it is definitely these guys. And obviously all the top dwellers we're going to be talking about yeah. are probably... Maybe maybe there's some that won't ha ha jump out, but most all of them will jump out if they get frightened. I think blanket policy here. Have a lid with top dwellers. It's just a good idea. <laughs> this is idea. true. This is true. Especially, it just takes someone slamming the door and scaring them for yeah. half, your, half your hatchet fish to jump out. Yes. So... No loud noises. What is this? Mm. Hatchet fish. There you go. <laughs> Looks just like that. <laughs> this is, Perfect. This is what you'll get. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> if They're really tight schooling fish, too, which is really cool. Nancy. They also hang out on the floor if your lid isn't tight. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> very true. That's true. They That's will be true. the ultimate bottom dwelling fish, I guess, if you will. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> uh, am Sad. I following Adrian's fish room? Oh, it yeah. sounds familiar. I know that does sound familiar. Sounds really familiar. Okay. I know Chris has been making the tour across the U.S. right now um, and was was wanting to come see my fish room as well, uh, keeping fish simple, uh, but that was the weekend we were getting married, so... We did that instead. Yeah, that happened instead. But anyways, let's get into the next one, Golden Wonder Killy. This one's all you. Oh, yeah. So actually, I really enjoy these fish. I've kept quite a few over the years. Uh, this is a fish you absolutely need a lid with. I and think they, that's going to be a reoccurring theme. Yes, ab, but this is in particular because they get quite large and they're very strong. So I think what's have, large like four inches. Yeah, they get about three and a half, four inches. Nice. Um, the largest male that I had was about four inches, and they the males are really pretty. They get that really intense yellow gold. The females still have really nice color too, and they'll stay together. I actually loved my pairs. They, it was really enjoyable to watch them hang out together. I like things that are at the top because I had a 40 breeder that was kind of situated where I could see directly over it, and that's where I had these guys, and they just looked amazing. They were really nice fish. you got to be careful, though, because anything small is going right in their mouth. Nom, 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 Yes, nom, nom. they will eat things. That is a fish that, and they, and they don't even seem to realize what they're doing. That's what's so funny is they just see when something hits the water, and again, you'll find this with a lot of the top dwellers, they are waiting for something to hit the water. That's what they eat. They are going to eat at the top. They don't want to go chase things. And so as soon as anything makes any movement up top, they go after it. But that's also kind of enjoyable to watch. So if you have, you know, any live food, like I loved dropping like baby dubias. I would drop baby dubias in there and they would eat those all day long. It was really fun to watch. So really cool fish. Their parameters are easy. I kept them, you know, it's like 78 around there and nothing crazy. Like I had neutral water, so I was pretty lucky. It was right around seven, uh, six, eight, seven, something like that. So they did well at those parameters. And I never had any problems other than the jumping because I would see them jump. I mean, they would, they jump all the time, any, and not even being spooked. So you really need to be careful, but they're just a really pretty fish and they get nice size. So. I, I gotta interject here interject and come back to hatchet fish because one thing i missed you're talking about food i missed i mean i didn't talk about water parameters either these are very standard water parameter fish mm -hmm. all, of, um, yeah, all of them are pretty easy. pretty varying water parameters as well but food specifically uh they generally will not go down on to the to the floor of your aquarium to feed right. so you're gonna want floating food so mm -hmm. floating little floating micro pellets or floating you know flakes float uh but don't don't just throw in sinking food and thinking they're gonna they're gonna eat because they won't no, that's, that's usually a theme with top, like all top dwellers. I mean, I think the blanket policy kind of goes for a lot of the stuff we're saying with the care because they stay in the top column of the water. So they're going to eat up there. They're going to do pretty much everything up there. Uh, next up, I'm going with the orange hatchet Danio. They're so pretty. Uh, which we have a couple of these yeah. in the fish room now. Um, so pretty. We used to have more, but we made a mistake and now we have less. Yeah. That happens. Mm-hmm. Um, these actually used to be called an orange, uh, orange hatchet, an orange hatchet fish. They used to be called hatchet fish, which obviously, if you're looking at this, you know it's not a hatchet fish. It's clearly more of a danio. So, mm -hmm. orange hatchet danio. This is the, this is the, probably one of the best pictures that I've seen of them. It's a really good picture. This happens to be at the West Spot, but they're very fun. They're very active. They're small. They're about an inch, um, if that even. Uh, they have that beautiful black stripe with the black spots. They run horizontally, 
and they're really, really, really orange. Uh, this picture does not do them justice. They're probably some of the orangest fish they I've are, ever seen. Yes, intense. Like it's neon orange. Very pretty. Very cool. Yeah, really cool fish. And yes, I do dog dubia, dubia roaches. Dubia yeah. roaches, not dubies <laughs> not and doobies. roaches. Nah, nah. <laughs> not those type of roaches. Uh, the dubias, they like them. The uh, but I'm keeping my group of these in a 20 long. Temperature's around 75. So like most Daniels, they really don't need a heater. Obviously, we heat the whole room. But um, I would not put a heater in with this fish if I was... If I was yeah. No. What am I trying to say? If I was doing an unheated aquarium, this is would this would be a fish. Perfect I would put fish in there. for that. Yeah. Rocky and Miles <laughs> said they wow, have them and they definitely cool. stay at the top only. Yeah, they are a top dweller for sure. Super super cool. And uh, someone already mentioned the butterfly fish, so mm, I have buddy. had it. I love these, and you do not love them as much as I do. I love them and I've kept them. So I, I looked at them for years. I think we've all seen these at like a pet store because they're not that uncommon. They're pretty common. Alrighty then, my someone's, turn. Someone's lighting off my, fireworks. My, my turn, all right? Come on now. Any, anywho, so yeah, I'd always see these and I'm like, eh, nobody buys these fish. I don't know anything about these fish. I bet you they're hard to keep. And then one day I just had an epiphany. I'm like, you know, today's the day. Give me a couple of them. So I bought, I think, two of them just to start out with. And I put them in my West African tank because they're West African fish. And we all know how I feel about West Africans. They turned out to be phenomenal. I really enjoyed them. I think they're very pretty. I've said this before. They remind me of like a very ornate mini arowana. The way their body is shaped and everything. The way they move at the top. They're just, they're really fun. Again, they will eat anything that will fit in their absolutely enormous mouth. That entire front half of their body opens up and they're just all mouth. So you need to be careful. But again, really enjoyable fish that when you look at them from the top, they're gorgeous. I mean, if you have a tank that you can kind of peer over, these are great fish for that kind of a tank. But uh, lids, 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 huge jumpers. Really easy parameters like most West Africans, too. It's just like anywhere from like, I'd say 75 to 80, pH 6.5 to 7.5. Just super simple. They are not difficult to keep. I was making it way more, way harder in my head than it ever turned out to be. The only thing is you have to keep them covered. That's it. But they're really, really cool fish and they, they're not aggressive at all. They just will eat anything that can fit in their mouth and they're not the smartest. So they'll go after stuff, even if it's not food that hits the top of the water. They're kind of shy too. It's nice to have floating plants with them. They like to have cover. They'll kind of try and find like wood or something to kind of sit right under, but they still stay exclusively at the top of the water. They will, you'll never see them at the bottom. You guys sound like aliens sometimes. Well, we are aliens, so there's a reason for that. Uh-oh, is it doing the thing again? Probably. I don't know. I'm really hoping to be back to the good mics next week, yeah. so fingers crossed. It's All right. It's probably rubbing or something. You know I wasn't going to make it through this whole list without talking about a rainbow fish. Shocking, but this is such a good one to talk about. And uh, I'm, I'm, I'm saying pseudomagills, all pseudomagills. Now, this is a fish that will roam around your aquarium. It does spend a decent time in the middle of the water column, but I would definitely classify it as upper water column fish. Um, super beautiful, super fun behavior. Uh, the male sparring is, when the males spar, as you can see in these photos, it's just Oof. absolutely beautiful. Um, it's like, just look at these guys. Around That's each other. Nuts. Yeah. Um, I will say some of these can be very finicky. Um, a little more uh, fragile. Uh, if you want some bulletproof pseudomagills, I would do like the Gertrude here or the Illuminatus, which are my favorite. Man, those are pretty. Yeah. This is one of the most pretty fish in the world. I would probably, I love fricatas, but a lot of people have a lot of problem with this fish. Uh, unless you're really like dedicating an aquarium to this fish, I probably would stay away from these. Um... For me, the Pseudomagill Ivan Stoffides have been kind of difficult, or more fragile, I would say. Uh, but still, pretty standard water parameters, you know, typical 7 pH, 75, <laughs> 78 degrees in that range. Uh, but they do have really small mouths, so keep that in mind, like most rainbow fish. Even monster rainbow fish, like 6-inch rainbow fish, they still have really small mouths. And uh, so, small foods, really small foods. The extreme nano pellets really good for these guys oh thank you leslie i'm glad i'm glad they're enjoying it i i hope that things are gonna go smoother for you here on out <laughs> with some different tactics 
So Leslie with a five dollar super chat says, "My shrimp are all over that wafer. Thank you, Chelsea. You saved them. Uh, they were starving. I'm so upset about the advice I got from others." So what Leslie is talking about? Uh, she got cherry shrimp for the first time. We talked about this in the previous stream, our member stream, and uh, got some advice to only feed them twice a week, which I would never advise anyone. Yeah. I know they're shrimp. People say they graze all day. Yes, they eat all day long, so you do have to give them some food. Yes, they will eat the food all day long if they have it. So. <laughs> and uh, your, your shrimp will be much happier. You'll get much larger populations mm -hmm. if you actually feed them. Yes. And not just say, oh, they'll get the leftover flake food or the leftover food, whatever. Clearly, I don't advise people to dump tons of food in there, but you want to make sure they have access to food all the time because the more you feed them, the more they're going to have babies for you. I mean, that's just... They need, they need to feel like there's a good food source in order to reproduce. That's most animals, so. Nancy B says, fake rainbows are my favorite rainbows. <laughs> there's a lot of discussion on pseudomagills not being rainbows. Technically, they're not, but they are. It's kind of weird. Uh, same with like the Madagascar rainbow. Uh, not technically a rainbow fish, but uh, us <clears throat> non-rainbow fish snobs uh, do include them with the group. So, I try really hard to not be any type of fish snob because I think a lot of people are learning and it's discouraging when you're like that. First class fish, pseudomagills are considered considered fake rainbows. Uh, let's get it. Let's head it back to you though. Oh, my turn again. Back to you. Oh yeah, the half beaks. You know, again, just like I said, the butterfly fish kind of reminds me of an arowana. These remind me of like a gar, like a little mini gar. And I think a lot of people think that about them. And I'm not somebody who would ever keep monster fish, but I can't lie. I do like the way some of them look. So I think it's really cool, especially with the half beaks, that you can keep something that is that small, but looks like a predatory fish. And these guys are super peaceful. Again, their mouths, like if they can fit something in there, they're going to get it in there. It's not quite as big as some of the other fish we've been talking about. So I don't think you need to worry quite as much. However, I've noticed they're more sensitive. You do need to make sure you have pretty solid parameters for these guys. And I don't think they require anything crazy, standard parameters like a lot of South Americans or West Africans or, you know, Asian species. You can go from like, I'd say keep them around like 75 to 78 in there. That's what we kept ours at. And I just would make sure you don't have any anything crazy, like no ammonia, nothing like that, not high nitrates. They're They're more sensitive, but they're really worth it. They're beautiful fish and they're really fun to watch. And they never leave the top. Those are those are some that you will not see. Like you have to again, like we were saying, be cognizant of food. You need to make sure they're getting enough to eat. I think that was something that we had to really keep our eye on was that they were actually getting to the food. Holy smokes! So Leslie Perry gifted five Aww, Sea Aquatic Waters memberships. Nice. Matt, Lily, First Class Fish, Christopher, and Mel. Welcome. Nice. And Thank as you, always, Leslie. we stream for the members 3.30 p.m. PST every Monday. Word. Very nice of you, Leslie. Thank you so much. I do like all the big mouth fish. I, I enjoy, like I said, I really enjoy predatory fish, but I would never keep them. So it's cool to have other options like this. They're like little mini predators. And <laughs> that's exactly what they are, actually. They love mosquito larvae. Yes. Oh, right. I forgot about that. They do. Mm -hmm. They really, We had a lot of mosquito larvae last summer and we fed it off to a ton of fish and they did really enjoy it. Bugs right. are great for fish too. If you can feed bugs to fish, it's a great thing. I'm gonna take a quick second here. Um, where'd it go, where'd it go, where'd it go? Where'd this comment go? Uh, Shooter McGavin, Shooter. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go by the bay, make things out of clay. What do you say? What do you say? What do you say? <laughs> Says, how can I receive a gifted membership? Gifted memberships are based on activity. Mm -hmm. So if you are a lurker, you are never going to get gifted someone a membership over someone who chats. Yep. Uh, so it is not really random. It is weighted. The more you participate, no. your odds of winning are better. Ramphonic says it best. Interact more. Mm -hmm. That's thumbs up. That's comments. That's shares. All of that counts. And uh, not a lot of people do that. So really, all it takes is a couple comments and then... Yeah. A couple, a couple interactions. I've seen someone comment like one or two times and get gifted a membership like not long after. So mm -hmm. it can definitely happen. And uh, I will say, like always, our member streams are rarely fish related. <laughs> unless, unless a member has a comment or yeah. a question about fish. You can always ask. Um, 
it's usually just pretty random so thank you again leslie that was very nice of you i'm glad your shrimp are already doing better i think it's gonna go swimmingly from here on out uh, and yeah i think the allow gifts thing is over i don't think you have to do that anymore oh maybe you do hmm. but i thought they got rid of that <laughs> Okay, moving to the next one. We're going back to killifish. Oh, the yeah. clown Aww, killifish or the so rocket cute. killifish. They have um, rockets. Another fish that obviously spends most of his time on top. Uh, and uh, again, really small mouth, so pay attention to what you're feeding them. Uh, I've these are jumpers, but in my experience, they're not as jumpy as some of the other species of killifish. Uh, mainly because they're a lot smaller, so it doesn't take a lot to, like, if you put floating plants in your tank, they're not going to jump. Like, if they, you just got to make them feel secure. So that's that's the key to not getting these guys to jump out, floating plants, in my experience. Uh, but it's a really cool, easy to care for, easy to spawn fish. Um, the fry are going to be really small, so keep that in mind if you're actually trying to grow them out. Um, but I've had these spawn... Uh, and same with like my lamp eye killifish that just community spawn and community tanks and you know every spawn one or two of the fry would make it Being subbed is required. I would hope so <laughs> <laughs> um, Allow gift is gone. Yeah, I thought they got rid of that uh, But not a lot to say I'm, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are familiar with this fish I just want to bring it up again because I think it is one of the prettiest freshwater fish it out a there beautiful fish. and they're super fun they're not aggressive at all also a nano fish which can be a huge plus mm -hmm. you know? great for desktop aquariums yep. and they actually they stay very small so they do not need a ton of space they'll use the space that they have though another really cool fish to um pair with this is like a peacock gudgeon believe it or not <laughs> yes which is another very very beautiful fish <sighs> they're going to be quite a bit bigger at around three inches and bigger bodied but Again, they spend most of their time on the bottom, and these guys spend most of the time on their tops. And I've seen a ton of tanks with uh, clown killies and peacock gudgeons, and it's just so cool to see some of the most beautiful fish together. Although we have a clown killie that's in love with a, uh, what is it? What's the? It's a Corydoras histatus. Yeah, they're like. <laughs> they are. They are married. It's wild. They hang out nonstop. They won't leave each other's side. It's bizarre, but hey, stranger things have happened, right? All right, now we're going to go to one more pick, and then we're going to open up the chat, and hopefully you guys can give us some suggestions on some of your yeah, favorite top dwellers. Uh, but, uh, you know, we're not going to leave oh, out pencil fish here. My favorite. My favorite. Not only my favorite top dweller of the day, but my favorite pencil fish also. This is Nanostomus equus. They call it, like, the hockey stick, the dip tail, the brown. I mean, there's a million different common names for it, but... The great thing about these guys is uh, they keep that 45 degree angle all the time. They, they stay angled. They stay at the top. Uh, I've kept so many. I've kept hundreds of these over the years. I just, I really love their giant eyes. I, I love, like I said, the angle. I feel like the more you have, like I, I really enjoy when you have them in a large group. The more you have, the more they school. If you keep less than like 12 to 15, they kind of hang out individually or in pairs. And it's pretty easy to sex these guys. The females are a lot deeper bodied and larger. The males are pretty thin. So once they get to be a few months old, you can start to see their body shape take and you, you can sex them pretty easily. So I love these guys. Super simple parameters, just really basic. They're, they're not the prettiest of pencil fish. Like obviously all the red arcs and the blah, 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 whatever. These guys are absolutely so much fun to watch and just it's nice to have something like that that stays at the top and there I wouldn't even say that they're that jumpy you still want to have a lid but I very rarely I maybe I just got lucky but I kept so many of them that they really didn't jump too much for me which is nice but um just a great fish a great pencil fish and he says I like this coverage of various fish you guys are covering several fish that I have been considering trying and uh Yes, the mics are the same ones. Yes, they're still having problems, yeah, but sorry. hopefully by next week we'll be back to the good mics. Still a work in progress on that mm -hmm. front. Mm -hmm. But there you go. Let's go back to some B-roll. Oh, oh the perfect timing. Look at these beautiful fish. We didn't yeah. even talk about rice fish, but as you can see, yeah, rice fish they're not, I wouldn't really say they're top And dollars. our rice fish from the wet spot, that our orange rice fish are doing great. They look so nice. I really, I can't wait for them to start spawning. I check every morning. I'm like, come on, guys. 
Come on. It's still settling in, I guess. Um, is the schooling shoaling just for the dip tails? Because every pencil fish I've ever owned has been a schooling shoaling. Yeah, uh, it depends even, on how many you have. Even my Beckford. So I kept uh, Beckfords in a 125, and they schooled all over the place. I kept very large, or I tried to keep very large groups of the pencil fish that I had. I had a lot of Beckford, and I had a lot of uh, Equus. And like I said, when I the larger the group, the more tightly they schooled. When you have, I think with any, when you have six of them. See, I'm I'm not a proponent of just get six. Obviously, if that's all you can afford and you're like, I get it, but 12 or more for me is kind of like, that's what's become the new standard, like 12 or more, because you really start to see the behavior, especially in the pencil fish, because they're smaller fish. So you, you start to see behavior change when you get larger numbers. Uh, and I do want to say, just please hit the like button, folks. That's all we ask around here. It's That'd free. Great. Helps us out. It'd be great. And uh, Leslie Perry says, do floating plants discourage all jumpers from leaving the tank? I will say they will help. They'll help, yeah. I don't know that discourage is the right word. Like, they're going to be like, oh, look, there's some lettuce. I'm not going to jump now. When I kept full-size water lettuce, I will say with smaller fish, it could help keep them in. Yeah, if they jump and they hit the water lettuce, they're obviously not flat. But when you keep, if you have, like, stupid duckweed or something, obviously that's not doing anything to... What, what'll happen is, is it gives them a, it gives them cover so they just feel more secure, right, exactly. which makes them less likely to jump out. Not as out. jumpy. So if there's like a big bang or, or something that frightens them, they'll actually go up into the roots of the plant and hide instead of like just darting and shooting out of the tank. That being said, they could, you could have your whole tank full of salvinia and they'll still jump out. Colin said the super red uh, Sinepa pencil fish are really neat. Like to get them, but they're, yeah, they're insanely expensive. <laughs> they're insanely expensive. They're beautiful. But, you know, I will say this. If you if you like the look of those, we have the... the purples uh, aren't that the much worse. The purples, the rubricadatus. So Nanostomus rubricadatus. They're the purple pencil fish. Much less expensive, and they look very similar. The males have great color. I actually prefer them to the red arcs. They're much hardier in my experience, too. I've had far less issues with our... We haven't had any issues, really, with our purples, but the red arcs, for me, I've had them... I've purchased them multiple times and had them all die off slowly, and it was very discouraging. A lot of money. Johnny says, I finally got babies Beckford pencil fish oh, after three long years. Nice. That's, that's exciting. That's always nice. And I love, see, I like, I don't even care that Beckfords are every, I love Beckford pencil fish. I think they're amazing. I just love all pencil fish. I think pencil fish are, everyone should keep them. If you have a tank that they can go and put them in there. Kenny says, you think zebra danios and some hatchet fish would mix well in a 180? Yes. But if I could suggest, instead of zebra danios, to maybe look at glow light danios. God, One of so the pretty. prettiest fish out there. They're mm -hmm. only like five or six bucks. Really pretty. Uh, I mean, not that, I mean, zebra danios are like a dollar, but. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, but a, a big school of glow light danios is one of the coolest things you'll ever see. Uh, Christopher says, any ideas for topwater fish for a really strong current river? You know, I don't know if they're really top dwelling, but the um, hill stream trout, they're really cool. They're like a cool water fish that, can, that love a good current. And also rainbow shiners. The, I know my shiners usually stayed like higher they didn't stay all the way up top they were like mid to high but they looked beautiful and they loved current loved it those are i think those are a couple good options uh these top dwelling fish hit the lids will they injure themselves they could Th they could but probably not yeah it depends on the size i think a the bigger fish. the fish the more likelihood i think it would be of them getting injured you're, um, you're never going to, I mean, not, I don't want to say never, but you probably, you shouldn't have that much of a space between the water level and the top of the tank, like, or the lid. It, it would only And if like you lower the water level, you're just going to give them more room. Yeah. It's kind of like. To jump. It's kind of, it's kind of like my, hey, they, look at these idiots. Fools. <laughs> look at these yahoos. Dorks. Um, it's like, so my quail, right? I, if I keep them, I have to keep them in a two foot like the, the top for my quail are two feet because if I make it four or six feet, they'll jump up yeah. and bash their heads. But well. when it's only two feet, they don't get enough momentum to injure themselves right. when they hit the top. Yep. Uh, it's kind of the same idea. You don't want to give them a lot of room to get that momentum. Right. 
Oh yeah, Alex, headstanders are super underrated. Uh, we have the red mouth headstanders and I'm in love. I just think they are some of the coolest fish. It's made me do a much deeper dive into headstanders. So. Our next blog post Yep. should be out this week. It's gonna be about head headstanders? It, yes, it is about. Well, I have one go. about headstanders and then I have another one about, uh, what's it called? Um, what was the here. last one you put out? Puffers, uh, Congo puffer. That's right, that's right. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you don't know, steampotaquatics.com, we do publish blog posts there and... Word. Check them out. Other stuff, not really. Things are happening-ish there-ish, so check it out. Yeah, but headstanders are very cool. I, I really enjoy the behavior. I'm noticing that ours are putting on size very quickly. I don't know if it's because I do feed kind of heavy, which that could be part of it, but they are getting bigger quickly, and I, I like that. It's exciting. Floating plants for fish is kind of like drywall, drywall with a, to a <laughs> Rottweiler. Sure, yeah. they can get right through it. However, they would rather stay right. behind it. It's the path of least resistance. You know, if it's if there's some resistance there, why would they? How many fish tanks do we have? Uh, 33, but we've also moved some things around. But it's usually right around 30. Mm -hmm. We're doing a complete remodel in the reptile room, yeah. so numbers are going to change as we move things around. Uh, there was a comment about the orange hatchet Daniels. Uh, I'm not seeing it now. No. Uh, but someone said they just got some like a week or two ago. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, it was up higher. Yeah, and they're, they're very cool. They're very cool. Very cool fish. Pretty. Like the color, like to me, fish like that, it reminds me kind of of like the glow fish because they just look so ridiculous, but it's so much prettier because it's natural, obviously. But it's striking. Uh, Johnny says, any options you have for my wet spot 12 Phoenix Rasboras and they're only 10 gallon. Uh, I think you're asking for tank mates for mm. your Phoenix Rasboras. More and I would Phoenix go, <laughs> <laughs> um, you could probably get more Phoenix Rasboras, but I would also do like one of the smaller Corridoras, like the Pygmaeus or the Hebrosis. Uh, you know, get something down on the substrate. Oh, Kenny. Red tail shark in a community. If it's a 180, it depends on what it's what the community is. Shrimp, uh, shrimp will get eaten. Yeah, but yeah. if you have a big enough colony, then they can outproduce them. Yeah, that's true. And honestly, if you have the right community, I could say I would say it's doable. It just depends and if it's on, heavily planted. It depends on it depends on what you want to keep with it, obviously. Same amount as me. I got about 30. Hmm. See, it's a good amount. It's a it's a healthy amount of tanks. I think about you know some people have not as many tanks, but they're huge like that. I think a lot of it depends on the size of tanks you have too. You know, we have varying sizes, but nothing too crazy large. Um, let's see what else we got going on. What's uh you know give us your suggestions on top dwelling. Yeah, fish. I want to know if I'm missing anything crazy that like because it's. I was just saying the other day that it's really difficult to find top dwelling fish for a lot of it. Like it's, it's a hard thing to find. There's not a lot of options. I mean, and the options that you have are kind of limited. So if you're going for like a specific type of tank, it can be really challenging. One eighty community tank. That's a good size tank for a community. Mm -hmm. I mean, for lots of different types of community tanks. And I think red tail sharks are so pretty. I mean, like, that's the thing is there's so many of these fish that, like, I would never recommend anybody ha or most people should not have them, but they're just so cool looking. And those are one of them. I will say if if it can fit it in its mouth, it's going to eat it. Oh, if yeah. it's a little bigger, it'll probably kill it and then eat it. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it really depends. It has like, to be well matched, you know? Like, there has to be something that's not going to mess with too much. Yeah, if you have, like, bigger community fish, like, mm -hmm. larger rainbow fish would be right. fine. If it's not worth it, you know what I mean, to them, that make, make, put stuff in there that's not worth it for them to mess with, if that makes sense. Did anyone mention the leaf fish? Not yet. Oh, are we taught, which type of leaf fish are, we, the are we talking or? about? I was going to say, there's the West African, which is the Tenopoma, um, Ossistri, I never can say it right, the Ossistri or something like that. And then there's the Asian leaf fish, there's the South American leaf fish. And I know most of them do tend to stay towards the top. So which one are you talking about? 
Yeah, the African butterfly fish. We yeah, talked we did about that. that. We went over that one. I've kept not a, quite a few, but a good amount of them, and I really I love them. They're great. Uh, Johnny says, I know you love quarries. I have yellow shrimp and ram's horn snails. Any better option fish-wise? There's no better fish option than Corydoras. Shocking that he said that, huh? Or Are rainbows. You surprised? Are you surprised? Uh, they're just my favorite. Rainbows, Corydoras, and Apistos. That's like my favorite tank setup. Jamie asks, thoughts on sylph and molly males with cichlids? Chindongo, Salu Salusi, in a 60 breeder. Um, I'm not a big Molly fan, so I'm probably not the one to ask. I, I'm people probably hate me for that, but could it be done? Probably. Has it been done? Probably. Uh, it's not anything I would ever do. Like, it's nothing that I would mix personally, but I'm sure it can be done. Yeah, yeah. I my red tail shark ate my autos. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That'll happen. That that sounds right. Uh, Christopher says you guys have mentioned that you don't really approve of keeping clown loaches. Is that just because people keep them in too small of a tank or another reason? For me, yeah, mostly it's because they're not kept properly. And they get very large and you need quite a few of them. And people have like one giant one and a 40 breeder. And I'm like, they're like baller doing? sharks. Baller yeah. sharks get big. They need to be in big schools. Yeah. And I think it's unreasonable for the everyday fish keeper to keep them. And I think that they are sold at a point where they look manageable, there's not enough information given, and a lot of people who should never have them end up with them. If you go back and look at Corey's 800 gallon before he moved when he had the clown loaches in there, there was one big one that wasn't even close to full size, and what, like 75 small ones? Imagine all those 75 being as big as the one big one. Even an 800 gallon, it's just not, it's not right, it's not doable. Yeah, <laughs> Lily, we'll let you know when we can talk about dogs soon enough. Uh, we are in the second half of the stream. Anything oh, are we? Goes. Talk about dogs. Yeah, pretty much anything goes after the first 30 Dog minutes. Dog talk begins. Go. <laughs> and go. I've always wanted to do a big tank with a metric ton of nanofish. <laughs> like a hundred or... Yeah, you're in good company. <laughs> this guy. He wants a hundred of everything. Oh. I think he wants your suggestions for tank mates with Phoenix Rasboras. Wait, who does? What? Where am I? Tank mates for Phoenix Rasboras. Oh. God. Kubatai Rasbora. <laughs> like, I'm like more Phoenix Rasbora. Like, with those types of fish, I would probably get more of those. Like, that would be what I would do. You know? That could be boring for some, but yeah. Oh, the archer fish is definitely a jumper. I experienced that. It's mm -hmm. unfortunate, and I was very upset with myself, so... Um, yeah, Molly's, I know, so they're... I'm not a big Molly guy either. I think that some of the sail fins are very impressive. They just look weird, which I like a weird looking fish, but I just personally, for me, that's not something that I would want to keep, really. Um, Molly's, sore tails. Yeah. like I did platies last year, but I'm over it. Like I'm getting rid of all my platies. Yeah, it's just not, um, it's not my thing personally, so. I do like the platies, though, I will say that, but I didn't, when I kept sore tails, I didn't really like them. Uh, I love my pygmy swordtails, but those aren't really like those are those are a wild uh, wild strain swordtail, so it's not really what you're thinking of. Um, I don't yeah, I just never I never really enjoyed them. I tried swordtails twice. I tried green, and then I tried koi, and it was just lackluster for me. Yeah, I don't know why. Not, it doesn't do it for me. Yeah, Curtis, Corey's got quite a few trout goodyids in his 800. <laughs> That's a lot. We have quite a few, not not nearly that many, but we have quite a few too. Well, EBAs eat all my shrimp. They will eat a lot of shrimp. I've had EBAs because I've I bred. I mean, I bred them. They bred themselves. I had so many EBAs for so many years. I had some that would never even look twice at a shrimp that wouldn't even think about it, and then I had some that the minute they saw it move would go after it. It just really depends on your fish at that point. But I would say they more they gear more towards the yeah they're going to eat it side. So, but if they're well fed, you know. I'm getting my dog a dog. Yay! <laughs> That's exciting. I like did it. someone mention half beaks? Yes, we did talk about half we beaks. We did talk about half beaks. We did talk about orange hatchet Danios for top dwellers too. Mm -hmm. We got those. <laughs> Leslie's dog Chandler was separated from his testicles less than a week ago. <laughs> poor guy. Mm. Good, uh, good though. That's a good thing, but poor guy. I have a deaf pity doggo Argent oh. Dogo Argentino, oh. and I'm getting him a rhododendron. 
Ridgeback. Ridgeback. I love Ridgebacks, the lion hunters. The lion hunters. They're just such beautiful dogs. Oh, I love those in Weimar honors. I'm a big fan of a Weimar honor. Uh, Alex says, Sneefun, I'm building a full-size Papua. 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 Uh, biotope for rainbows. <laughs> is it going to be a real biotope, or are you going to have plants from other places? You're going to be like places? me and be biotope-ish. <laughs> That's as good as I'll ever be. Uh, it says, I have 10 or 12 Cali Tawas, 9 Skull Creeks, Sahuluenses, which are probably some of the prettiest rainbows. Want either want either three or four Chilothrina Affinis or Bosmani Pagwa. Will that mm. work? It will. My favorite Chilothrina, though, is still a good old-fashioned Blaherai. I like Parkinsoni a lot. I know not, I, I, but I really like them. <laughs> just to throw that in there. Not Chilothrina, but yes. No, I'm just saying. Like, that's <laughs> kind of... I remember earlier someone asked, and I feel badly because I think I started to say it, and they wanted to know what type of rainbows we thought were the prettiest, so I thought I'd throw that out there. Uh, Bryce says, are the Procatopus surface dwellers not from what I saw? They were all over the place. That being said, that's the first time I've ever seen them, and they were only in a 10-gallon tank, so... Uh, it would be hard for me to say yes or no for sure, but in that situation, they were all over the tank. Your Weimers are beautiful. One day. I hope you get one one day. They're lovely dogs. They're the Sesame Street dogs. Do we remember the Sesame Street dog? Weimer on her. All my, my tank's lidless. Yeah, I gotta, I gotta be honest. I did not have a lot of lids a lot of the time unless I absolutely needed them. Like my beta macrostoma best believe they had lids i've never had a fit a more prolific jumper ever in the time that it took me to take these macrostoma and put them in a bucket in order to transfer them to their tank they jumped out five times five times and i had a tight lid or i thought and they got out of i don't even know how they did it those sorcerers like <laughs> those were the only fish that i've ever was like you are on lockdown lockdown so my rainbows are very aggressive eaters. They swarm at the auto feeder every time it goes off. Will feeding more call, <laughs> calm this down? No. <laughs> they're crazy eaters. That's how they are. Yeah, that's just the way they are. I like it. See, I enjoy watching rainbow fish eat. I think they're, they're some of my favorite fish to watch eat because they do just... when I We have a bunch in a tub, and when I drop food in, you don't see them because it's dark. And all of a sudden, they just swarm. And it's so quick, and, I, and they don't even let the food hit the ground. I love it. T-Shot -shot says, I got bit by a Rhododendron Ridback at a customer's house walking to my van, uh -oh. and he charged me and bit my hip. Uh-oh. Scary stuff. In, yeah, unfortunately, that type of dog, Ridgebacks, have a really high prey drive. That is, they were bred for that. That is what they were bred to do is to chase and to hunt. So that instinct doesn't go away easily. And I think they're not bad dogs, but it, you have to learn to control that in them or you work usually you work them or you give them a task or something to do that they don't feel the need to do that but so clinton's asking a question that i don't think i have an answer for he says i have a lidless 20 gallon with tons of endlers and some panagara um i need some tank mates to keep endlers in check It'd be great if they hmm. can breed in there as well i mean you could try like some bigger species of dwarf cichlids i don't even think that would uh, but i don't think they're going to keep them in check no I think you would need a much larger fish than you can house and in that tank. A to more do aggressive that. fish too, right. which is just going to cause more problems. You'd need you'd need something. Yeah, I would think that you would need a like a, a medium sized cichlid, like a South American or Central American cichlid. And then again, it really does come down to that fish. You you would. I mean, I'll tell you, I had a purple spotted gudgeon that would eat anything all the time. <laughs> so that's a good one, but they get huge. So. Jesse says, I have soft water. How can I get it up to house shrimp and scuds in a community aquarium? Uh, you could do like an aragonite-based substrate would help. Uh, you could crushed throw coral. in limestone, crushed coral. Um, you could feed foods that are high in calcium. It would also help immensely. Mm -hmm. um, just a few suggestions for you. <laughs> Alex, my macrostoma also popped the plastic sheet PVC lid off their tank and jumped out. Yeah. Yes, that is, the, I don't know how they did, I don't know how they did it. it. They're strong fish, they're large fish, they were adults, but still, it's unbelievable. Rainbows are like Homer at an all-you-can-eat restaurant. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> you did spell it right, thank you. Yes, Ridge, Ridgebacks are just great, though. Congratulations again, because they're gorgeous dogs. Very smart dogs. I love a weird dog. Like I love dogs. We were thinking that 
Braxton might have a little ridge yeah, back I, 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 I've Braxton, definitely come here. thought about it. His coloring and just some of the ways he moves. I don't know. It's It sometimes comes down to that for me. Come here, buddy. Come here. Yeah, Clinton, if you can catch the fry and oh, get larger fish, like, yeah, you have a 36 gallon, you could house something in a 36 come gallon here. that would probably be able to nope. take care of that problem for you. Come you here. could, like, oh. you could oh. probably do, like, an electric blue Acara. I mean, it's a little, 36, 36 gallons is a little small for an electric blue, but you can always do, like, a pair in there. And they would, burr, they'd burr, probably burr, burr. be pretty efficient at that. Hmm. Good boy. Black chin live bears. What uh, about them? I, Love them. Okay. Oh, the there you go. The Metallicus. Lakeisha said she, something. what about black chin live bears? Because she's getting two. I would get a lot more. Okay. Hopefully you're getting Oh, a, no, she's getting two golden doodle puppies. Sorry. Oh, okay. That was a separate thing. Yay, that's exciting. Congratulations. <laughs> so, yeah, apparently he likes them. I am not familiar with them. So, what are they? What is that? You saw them at the wet spot, and I said, I've always wanted to keep these, but I never have. They're the small little live bears. They have the black chin and the little... Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know what they are. They are very cool. Padonk, padonk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, <laughs> yep. Okay, guys. Okay, that's enough. Good. Well, you asked for it. I know. So that's I know. Now I'm saying... To go away. Lid free tanks, too much right, of that. Yes, go. Leslie, that is go, true. Go, 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 I go. suffered from, av like, I had to constantly top things off, and that was my own fault because I was lid lazy. Um, I don't think my fish enjoy extreme fish food. Any suggestions? Bug bites. I, my answer for everything is bug bites. My favorite fish food. It's wonderful. I have never had a fish turn their nose up to bug bites ever, and I've had fish turn their nose up to food many times. So. I find that I never have issues with bug bites. Jennifer says, my tap is 5.5. My GH and KH are not even measurable. And I have blue velvet shrimp exploding. I think a, I wanted to read that comment because I think people get a lot of a lot more hung up on parameters than they need to be. I agree with that. Um, especially when it comes to shrimp. Mm -hmm. um, and I've said this 100 times and I'll never stop saying it. If you want to be successful with shrimp, get them locally yes. from a local breeder that breeds them in your water. And uh, usually you can do that through local aquarium societies, uh, local Facebook groups. Uh, it's usually not hard to find someone locally breeding cherry shrimp or other varieties of shrimp. Sadly, they're like canary in the coal mine, though. They really, if your parameters get too crazy, it is not surprising when they start going quickly. So you, I think consistency, like most fish, that's the most important thing with shrimp is make sure it's consistent. Audra says, I have black chin lime bears with uh, one of my pea puffer oh, colonies. Nice. There you go. That's a cool combination. Right, I like that. Go. I just like, I like keeping pea puffers with other small fish. Like, I think it works. I kept um, my Kubatai rasbora with my pea puffers, and it worked out just fine. So. My Congo tetras go ape crazy when I feed them live black mm, worms. Anything live that wiggles like, like that. like a lot of fish go crazy. Yeah, they sure do. Uh, what have I missed here? I was distracted. Uh, D Maldonado 93, would you or anybody you know be interested in the cutter eye, blue eyed cichlid? I have a pair that are, or I think a pair that are pairing up and they need some room to be bred out. From what I read, they are pretty rare, caresless fish. They're really pretty fish, the cutter eye. So. Are they cares? Uh, I was, that was not aware of that. That would surprise me since they dropped like 500 fry. Yeah, but then again, there are some that, I mean, they are, I mean, they're pretty fish. They used to, uh, Ocean Aquarium in San Francisco, where I used to go pretty regularly, he bred those at one point, the cutter eye. He'd always, well, he'd always have like different life stages of cutter eye when I'd go there. They are really pretty fish. Um, we are kind of at max capacity for medium-sized cichlids right now. Um, We've got a lot. We are pretty much at max capacity for yeah. just about everything. We have a... We have to make room for things at this point. We have a moratorium on buying fish right now. Yeah. No new fish. Yeah. Reptiles, on the other hand, that's why we're redoing the... That's why we're redoing the reptile room. It's very to... easy to get carried away in this hobby. It is. And end up with more than you can honestly yeah. give good care to. We are trying to focus on what we have and making the best like everything the best of the best of the best with honors for them so mm -hmm. that's the goal in our fish room and our reptile room it's quality like quality over quantity 
for sure. Shout out to Justin at Ocean from Matt. Yeah, Justin's amazing. Justin will spend an hour. If you're someone who's really into fish and you want to like nerd out, go talk to that guy. He will stop what he's doing and talk to you because him and I have had some, we've had great conversations. He loves West Africans. He used to import a lot of them, but I know he's had trouble because he's such a small, he imports such small numbers. It's difficult for him to get his hands on anything at this point because of how things are going. But he is a good guy. His wife is amazing. They work really hard. I mean, I think, you know, Corey's done multiple videos on ocean. Other, there's Ocean is, it is so different from most fish stores. And he is someone who, if you have the opportunity to go there, I'd go there. He's, he's a cool guy. They're cool people. Uh, the 186 element says bug bites, flakes or pellets? I love them both. Both, yeah. I've uh, Both of them. It, it's amazing. Black soldier fly larva is the main ingredient, and that is such a wonderful food to feed fish, reptiles, inverts. I mean, anything that will eat it should eat it. It's excellent. Uh, and somebody asked if there was worms or something they could cultivate in the, the community aquarium to never have to feed them. Um, you're asking a lot there. Sweet. Is it possible? Yes, but you would have to have tons, way more bugs than fish. So yeah. let's just say you have like a 40 breeder. Um, you'd probably it would have to be so lightly stocked and so overly stocked on on bugs and and worms that I don't I don't think it. It would be easy, but I'm sure it's possible. Yeah, no chasing parameters. It's the worst. Uh, hey, guys, I'm on a moratorium for buying fish, too, but Grandpa's gift card just came <laughs> through. Uh-oh. <laughs> Watch out. Yeah, Matt, you went through Rizzo. So, yeah, yeah, I remember. Like, it's, it's a great place to go. If you live in Northern California or you're visiting and you're in the Bay Area Ocean Aquarium. Winning to try feeding mosquito larva to my fish They'll this summer. It. Any advice from someone who's done it? I've They'll done it, it multiple times. Yeah. They'll love it. Um, I would start small because you can get overrun with mosquitoes really fast. Uh, we do not have that problem. We have a lot of stuff to feed them too. So. Fortunately, we do have yeah. a lot of tanks. So, uh, But even like out here, we, we end up with a lot of mosquitoes. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know, your neighbors might hate you if you're growing mosquitoes, but uh, otherwise it's not, an, it's not really a big issue. It's they fish love them. Uh, you, you can usually trigger a lot of spawning with mosquito larva. The, just the way they move in the water really makes fish go nuts. So we fed off some dragonfly larva at some point mm -hmm. to some things like uh, there's, if you know, like if you're not getting them from some weird place, like we know where things come from or what's around our house you know what I mean like we know so I don't feel I don't hesitate to feed off a lot of the larval stages of bugs that are around here because it's excellent protein for fish and it's what they would eat in nature a lot of the time so they love it Alex said scuds sea shrimp or black worms will work while in a tank if the fish density is low yeah the you and, and, and right. what you think is low, it would have to be even lower, in yeah, my opinion. like low, 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 like nothing. <laughs> like you're keeping worms and you guest starring a fish. Like, that would kind of be... I will say, it is it is fun and interesting. Just just throw a tub outside, fill it up with water, and just see what makes it in. Like, what kind of weird-looking bugs and things you get in there. Uh, it's kind of interesting. I think it is, anyways. What's the best way to harvest mosquito larvae? I just take a fish net and scoop them out. Whoosh. Go outside it's to a puddle easy. or whatever, like, yeah, and just scoop them out. It's actually really enjoyable. It's mm -hmm. very cathartic. Just go out there and scoop them and then dump them in. If we leave wash. a five-gallon bucket with any amount of water in it, there'll be mosquito yes. larva within a week. Most places you can do that, I think, at this point in life. You don't want to leave too much standing water out, though. I mean, that can be a nightmare. Tadpoles? I don't see, I don't see why not. I've never done it. So I don't know, but I don't see, I mean, it seems like it would be fine. That being said, I'm, I've never done it, so I don't know. Uh, Lakeisha said, what small pop dwelling or schooling fish would you recommend for a West African take with Seatocranus, Cassiaris, and albino crebensis? Probably, <laughs> um, 
I would say lamp eye, like the lamp eye Achilles, but you know, I've kept, I've left, I kept lamp eye Achilles with uh, Buffalo head. Yeah. You can do lamp eye Achilles. They're great. They'll spawn in your tank. They're really cool little fish. And the cribs won't even think twice about them. I'd say like you might, one or two might go missing with the buffalo head, but I don't think it would be a big issue. My, Like I said, mine didn't get them, so. My neighbors are going to love me and my tubs this summer. Oh, yeah. Who cares? That's fine. Get over it. Let them, they'll be fine. Uh, Jesse says, have you seen the new Lugwidio white? Nope. Uh, and I wouldn't even be interested in it because it's probably not going to stay white. Yeah, I don't buy it. And the purple, purple Cabo plants? Is that what mm -hmm. it is? I'm not sure what that one is. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to look it up. I'm but I've never seen a white plant stay white. Those are usually manufactured to be white, and then once they get put in other water, um, I think they mean, go green. I think you're talking about the purple kumbamba. I think that's because there that that is a thing, mm. and it looks yeah. I, I, I've never kept the purple kumbamba, but I, I have, have seen it. I've kept it. So here's the deal: the edge, the ends are more purple. Like it's not. It's not purple. <laughs> like, it's not. I'm looking at this picture, and I'm like, no, that's not. No. I mean, to I'm sure it, it exists. To get that purple, you would need CO2 and extremely high light. A lot of iron. Like, yeah, it's just, uh, yeah, no. I, I don't want to have to work that hard for plants. I focus on fish more. I always want plants involved. I just, I care way more about the fish than the plants. So white leaves on an aquatic plant is usually some sort of mineral deficiency. So you can manufacture a mineral deficiency to turn your plants white and then sell them as like white Anubias or white this, white that. Uh, and then as soon as they take them out of that tank that has a deficiency and puts them into a tank with no deficiency, guess what? It's going to turn green again. And I can't tell you how many times people have been ripped off by that. It's a very, it just... very smart uh, little piece of advice that Alex is imparting. Tadpoles have a slime on them that make them undesirable to fish. That makes so much sense because you yeah that makes a lot of sense so there you go you could try but whether or not they do it who knows thinking of getting aspidorus pelotus nice uh they seem very it's a very in appearance they seem to vary in appearance uh, i'm not sure if you saw them when they were there recently uh ramundii menzii are the same species fish um a lot of the aspidors look alike. Usually, you know, you got to, some of them you have to count scales. Some of them are getting reclassified as corridors. Some of them are getting re reclassified back to aspidors. That whole thing is kind of a mess right now. Um, but yes, I did look at the, the aspidors pelotus. I'll always look at them. Even though I keep them, I'll always look at them because they're super amazing fish. Uh, and I would highly recommend them if you want them. Uh, and the reason they're going to vary in appearance is because they're just various sizes. Did summer tubs for the first time last year? I swear I saw less mosquito <laughs> larva, less mosquitoes between all the larvae yeah. the fish ate and the frogs I accidentally bred. Whoops, that, that happens. We have a lot of frogs. A lot, well, there's frogs constantly in our fish room, hopping around. I know we always have frogs. It's funny everywhere. I love frogs, so you know, I always get excited when they. I had one swimming in, I walked in one morning, there was one swimming in a tank, and I was like, you're not supposed to be there. That's wrong. Incorrect. Yeah, they are cute. Rocky Amal says, I adopted a single male guppy from a family member, and he's a bully to my white clouds. Will he Ugh. chill out? I would say if it's been like a couple weeks and he hasn't chilled out, he's probably not going to. He's probably pissed off that he's by himself, but I, I mean, that's nice that you took him in. But yeah, he's probably like where all the ladies at. My favorite bottom dwelling cichlid will always be a pistogrammas. That's a good one. Always. That's a good one. Good one to have. And that's why we oh, have 800 you. of them. Come here. <laughs> but they're all great, so I'm not mad. What's your favorite bottom dwelling cichlid for me? Hmm. What is it? Yours is a pistogram. What's well, mine? Probably Laticara or... They're, they don't they don't say that low though Latacara. they they're all over the place I don't know That's can I drink one. my pond water I don't oh. know why not oh. oh I would drink my pond water I'm gonna get giardia I would drink it in the winter in the summer I would boil it <laughs> yeah there's so much thing make like that green make sense. and festering in there oh raccoons will get yeah they'll get them that's unfortunate. My mom has that problem. 
our pond has a very steady supply of fresh water in the winter. This dog is chasing his tail right he in front that. of me. Oh, buddy. Get it. Get that tail. Frogs are a good thing. Frogs eat bugs. I mean, who can be mad at little tree frogs? Plus, we, I mean, we have little, we have crickets that get let loose in the fish room by accident. Oh, God, so, so they, many. they clean up, they clean up what we let out on accident. There's a male dubia running around in there that I can't get my hands on that hopefully a frog gets its hands on. I've always thought about like buying house geckos and just letting them roam free in the fish room. It, the humidity is, I mean, the heat and humidity in there would be fine. They would be fine. They would just need like a place to bask. <laughs> it's like just leave an open basking area. Oh my God, I want an armadillo. I love armadillos. They are so cool. Beaver fever. <laughs> what? I don't know what that means. Wait, what? What? I'm confused. I think I missed something. Me someone either. someone was hunting mushrooms and had the wrong ones, I think. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good episode of Bob's Burgers, by the way. Ever kept a freshwater moray eel? No, I'm still hesitant. Mm. I don't know that I'm fully confident that they're actually freshwater. Like, long term, I realize they spend some of their time in freshwater, but... It's a fish that... I feel like it's too sensitive to even try. I don't know. When for for how expensive they are, and like I've never had someone come up and be like, I've had my freshwater moray eel for five years. No, I've never I, had someone say that to I've me. I've seen on an Instagram like there are people who keep them, and like I mean, I know it can be done, but I don't and think also, it's easy. Like if you're somewhere like Florida, you're gonna have a lot better odds of a brackish water fish <laughs> surviving. In your freshwater, yeah, like any any Lake Tanganyikan style parameter water, you're gonna have a better success of keeping um, something that might or may not be brackish in freshwater. Yeah, Kenny. Technically, we could have geckos wandering around if if we could make sure they couldn't get out, which we cannot do. They they could get out as it is right now. If I could ensure they couldn't get out and set up like a basking area, I like with a mercury vapor bulb so they're getting uv uva uvb and heat yeah why not they that's what they that's how they live they that's what they do they're in houses they're outside they're all over the place here it gets too cold for them to go outside so that would be my concern if they could get out but other than that the humidity in there is probably at least 80 percent, if not more all the time and it is probably 80 degrees give or take so they could they could live in there Oh, armadillos carry leprosy. Lovely. They're still pretty dang cute, though. Pretty darling. Made it even with a 30-minute drive from town. Nice. Good job. That was efficient dinner eating. Good job. The reptarium, reptarium near me has an armadillo and two oh, sloths. Cool. Sloths are so incredibly hard to keep. Like, yeah, I would love that. a slot, but yeah. a sloth. Slot. 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 <laughs> Hey, I did see that Moonlight Aquatics had tiger mores. They are very pretty, but still, I, I wouldn't, I, I'm too, I'm a little too nervous to take the plunge there. I, I don't think I would try that quite yet. I, until I know somebody who's done it success, successfully personally, I probably wouldn't try it just because I don't want to kill things. I hate that. It's never fun. Mm -mm. Um... So anyways, <laughs> dot, 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 dot. Uh, what else we got going on? Anything else? We might be getting close. Minimum length for a zebra danio tank. So here's the thing with oh, danios. I saw that earlier. A lot of people put danios in like 10 gallon tanks or even 20 talls. I don't like it. Like the minimum for me would be like a three foot tank. Mm hmm um, I don't care how many gallons it is. It could be like one gallon as long as it's three feet because they're <laughs> very fast. Sense. They love to swim yeah, and they get startled easily, which causes them to just bolt. So mm -hmm. Daniels are very hyperactive fish that can, if they get going, they can run into something. They can smash into the side of the tank. Um, rainbow fish have the same problem. I was going to say they're similar to rainbow fish with the way they move. They're quick. They And it's just, stuff. 
I don't know, like any Danio in a 10 gallon tank, I would just would not, mm -mm. I would not be approved. I would not approve. There's more margarita, margarita eating by the D-Day girl, but it was efficient. Hey, whatever she wants, right? Happy birthday to her. It's her party and she can cry if she wants to. Um, what are the chances of a molly that's been in a freshwater tank for months staying alive in a saltwater tank? Well, I, molly Very good. Yeah, I was going to say mollies live in salt water a lot of the time, so I don't think that that would be a huge issue. You probably don't want to just dunk it straight yeah, in. Yeah, don't if you just plop and drop it, it's probably Don't do die. that. If you want to gradually up the salinity, then yeah, I think they'd be fine. They'd live, that's how they live and spawn. Hey, any cave species? Like, I don't know what you mean. <laughs> cave species? For like a, t a specific tank or... Blind cave tetras? <laughs> like, I don't know. You want something that's going to breed in a cave? I'm wrong, something. Burgundy. All right, just overflowed my small hex. Glad it's Ah, in shoot. Indoor, outdoor carpet over concrete. God, it's so annoying. I've done that so many times, and it was not on concrete. It was on hardwood, and I wanted to die. Uh, anything like the cave tetra? Any cave aquarium ideas in the oh. future? I am not a fan of cave tetras. I don't like them either. I think they're ugly. Yeah. I think they're weird. I find it even I though... get the appeal that yeah. some people have for them, but they're just not for me. And I know that that's how they are naturally, but it still makes me sad. <laughs> like, I'm just like, you can't see? I'm sad. I don't know. Like, I think it's cool. I think it's a cool fish for, like, science classrooms. I think there's a lot that can be learned there. Uh, yeah. But otherwise, I don't think I would ever recommend them. Xana doo doo, what up? Guppies for a ten gallon. The only thing is, is if you have males and females, that ten gallon is going to become too small really quickly, unless you have a way to get rid of the babies. <laughs> Xana doo doo. So here's a funny story. I now apparently own the rights to the Xana doo doo song. Oh lord. You know that from that movie. Like what? Xana doo doo is from a movie. I know it's from with Olivia Newton John. Yeah. So I didn't know that. R.I.P. And so, like, during one of the streams, I was, like, playing it. And now, anytime another person plays that song in their video, <laughs> they get copyrighted from me. That's so weird. I don't know how. I, 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 I'm serious. I've got, like, hundreds of copyright That's notices so of people stealing my content. <laughs> and when I go That's to funny. check on it, it's the Olivia Newton-John song. So somehow I got the rights to it. I don't know how, but... Only him. It's very bizarre. So, Kenny, I did have an Aki before I moved. Um, the Aki... Let me tell you what lizard you never want to leave out. That would be an Aki monitor. They are fast as hell. And my Aki is the only... I've been bitten by every animal. I've been bitten by so many things. The Aki's hurt. <laughs> like, those... When you try and grab them, they hurt. And we actually do have quite a few lizards in there. So they just don't free roam because there's too many and they could get out and it's cold here. So yeah, that's why you're banished to the garage, Barbara, hardwood floor. I, that I Come only on. had, that was Come really here. my only option. Come here. So it was hardwood or it was nothing. And I overflowed my tanks multiple oh, times. Oh, big stretch. So, big stretch, My fault. Buddy. My fault. Uh, ch -ch -ch -ch. <laughs> You'll buy the rice for me? <laughs> if only I could figure out how I obtained the rice. I don't even rice. understand how that would have happened. Like, that's so it's, random. But I get, hey. like, every day I get at least one that's copyright so notice. And I'm like, oh, what did I do now? And then Watch I go out. to it, and it's someone else using my Olivia, Olivia Newton-John Newton song. Olivia Newton-John's estate is coming after you. I own it. <laughs> I got the rights to it. They're going to come after you anyways. Oh, Basilisk took hours to catch. Yeah, we have a sailfin dragon, and I'll tell you what, I'm in the process of taking him out more and trying to get him used to being handled, and he's he's being pretty good about it, but he also, when he thinks he's being fed, he's so food motivated, he shoots himself out of the tank, and he has multiple times, we have tubs right underneath him, and luckily they like to swim. He just falls in the tub, takes a little swim, and then we have to put him back in, but yeah, I've, I've chased quite a few lizards in my day, my emerald tree skinks, those are the worst to chase because they're tiny and they are lightning fast and I don't want to hurt them. That's my thing. I'd rather chase a bigger lizard and grab a bigger lizard because I don't feel like I'm going to hurt it. With the little ones, I feel like I'm going to hurt them. And that terrifies me. Barbara says, so do I get royalties? I don't get royalties <laughs> because I would actually have to 
legally copyright strike yeah. them, at which point they would obviously figure out that I'm not Olivia Newton-John and I do not own this song. Although I would take a while once they looked at him to and, figure and it I out. Would, plus, I would never just copyright strike a random channel. I mean, I, I wouldn't copyright anyone to begin with. Um, mm. If someone was stealing my con content, I would just say take it down. Because uh, we have the option. Like, I could send you a copyright strike, which is legal, a legal document, and you will get in trouble. Or I could just, or the other option is you can request them to take it down and they have seven days, um, which is what I do. I would never copyright someone. That's just ridiculous. That's like bad juju, I feel like. It'd yeah. come back in a bad way. There's just no point. Zen! There you are. There she, everyone was asking there about you, old I Zenny. I was concerned. I was concerned. But there you are. Okay. And all is well with the cosmos. How many guppies for a 10 gallon? You could get like five, six, and well, you're he, gonna have hundreds. He says all males. Oh, all males! You could for a ten gallon. You get like a dozen. Yeah, for sure. Males are yeah. The males are the prettiest, anyways. So there you go. Good call. That's perfect, actually. <laughs> Wait, Bob is or isn't <laughs> Olivia Newton John? I don't even know. I couldn't even tell you. I I can't. I can't even tell the difference. Yeah, hey, you've seen the plumbing. You know. <laughs> I was like, maybe. Don't I act do. like you don't know. Maybe I do know. I know a little bit. About a little bit, but you know. Yeah, I'm so glad Zen showed up. I was concerned. That is a lineage nine Corey. I mean, who even knows? <laughs> I mean, seriously, the Corys get moved in and out of lineages so often. It's, it's just like, why? I, like, I tried really to learn all the this. all the lineages. Obviously, I know, and I, like, I, I was like, I want to know all the lineages. Obviously, I know all nine, but then I want to know like exactly what fish, what Corys are in each lineage. And then after a while, I was just like. Who cares? They just keep getting changed anyways. And then I was hearing someone talk about, you know, interbreeding Corys and you can keep Corys from different lineages together and they won't interbreed. But how do you know? Because they get, they get changed all the time. Like one minute, you, this guy's in lineage four and then the next minute he's in lineage six. It's, it frustrates it's the Wild me. West. I mean, don't, there's definitely lineage fish that are never going to get changed out of their lineages, but there's other ones that just jump around all over. It's hard to keep, if you are someone who is trying to make sure to keep a certain species or like line of fish pure and keep that, you know, it can be difficult when they reclassify things constantly because you really don't know what you're doing at that point, even the people that pay close attention. So that why, that's why it annoys me. And you personally. get scientists fighting back and forth yeah, and it's, bickering. Yeah, it's and... just a whole, it's like, come on, guys. Like, Curtis let's... does make an excellent point. He says you've never seen Bob and Olivia Newton-John in the same place true. at the I same time. That is true. I have not. So, and she's, well, I don't think I will ever, it can't happen now because she is deceased. So, it will, it will not be happening. Trust me, if I had a voice like that, I would have a singing channel, not a fish <laughs> channel. Hey, Kenny. Danny Ken Aquatics, what's up, buddy? Good to see you. No one recognizes how beautiful oh, Odessa barbs they are, are pretty. because they're you have pretty. to get them from a good source if you want them to be pretty. You just can't go to Petco Ugh. and buy an Odessa barb. See, no. you can go to Petco and buy a cherry barb and make yeah. it look pretty dang cherry, but you can't do that with an Odessa barb. Mm -mm. No, you cannot. Uh, I remember my leopardus quarries. They were the cooler version of Julii quarries. It's a shame I had to sell them. That is true. And they're a little larger, too. If you're into the larger type of quarries. Look at this baddest art is really fun. Whew. The best looking shrimp in their market right now. And if you had the money, which ones would you buy? Wait, who? I will show you what I think are the best. I'm um, talking about a specific type That's what type I of think are the best. Uh, give me a second here. Hmm. Uh, let's take a look. I'll show you. Maybe. Okay, here we go. Uh, uh, inverts, inverts. Where's inverts? Why am I here? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I was like, you're looking right at uh, me. Right here. Oh, yeah. The I love these shrimp. guys and their little pom-poms. When you have like a hundred of them, like right here in this picture, and they're all doing their little pom-pom dance, it is so cool. And let me tell you, having a hundred of them would not be a cheap Feet. No, I, I did <laughs> buy one of these four packs, and unfortunately, I was sent really, 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 really small they shrimp. Were tiny. Very tiny. I, I was, was surprised. I was kind of sad. Yeah. 
Uh, um, like we both looked at them and went, uh -oh, like it clearly that's not says good. 0.25 inches, but man, I feel like they were struggling to even even be well, there. When shrimp like th these type of shrimp are that small, it doesn't bode well a lot of the time. Like it's difficult sometimes with these more sensitive, like fancier shrimp t <laughs> when they're that little. I'm hoping they're they they are in a tank that has lots of moss, but I feel like yeah. if they made it, I would have seen I would have seen them by now. I saw one for a long time, but I don't yeah. I don't and that and they they were in a corridors only tank, so mm -hmm. it's not like they were getting picked off. No, there was nothing in there that would have gotten them. For sure. Um, but Dan does them really well. He's got thousands of these. Oh my god, yeah, there. they were so awesome. And to see that many, oh, beautiful. I would I would though I would pay extra just to get a one inch shrimp. Mm -hmm. Just because I'm going to be way more successful with a one-inch shrimp I than a baby. With certain fish in general, when you see options for size, depending on what type of fish it is, it is a lot of the time better to go with a larger one. If it's the type that, like, you know, getting them past that, like, young stage is difficult. Like, if I ever tried checkerboard cichlids again, I would definitely go after adults. Like, I would no longer get any juveniles because that's what I've had issues with. Barbara says, who's the guy that was improving Odessa barbs? He has a website, I think. That would be Greg Sage at Select Aquatics. Greg Sage has the best Odessa barbs and the best trout goodyids out there, which I'm glad to say my trout goodyids are from him. You need Zacco oh, platypus yeah, in your life. Oh, yeah, we want those. Oh, we know what those trust are. me. Yeah, we, yep. yeah, we want them. Uh... A different strain that I've never seen, Danikin, showed up on a wholesale list of mine, and I was like, oh yeah, my gosh. Those are but sweet. we got to stick to our moratorium on buying new fish, not mm -hmm. doing it. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to get a mountain horn dragon instead. <laughs> That's logical. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. Um, I wish other colors were as readily available as cherry shrimp or as prolific. I would say yeah. the oranges are just as prolific. I had, my um, blue velvets did well, so, but yeah, the cherry shrimp are definitely the most prolific in my experience. Okay, oh, I guess I gotta switch this back, huh? Let's go with, let's see what this one does. What? Oh, I think this is the same thing. What is it? The background. Ow. You got ours from the wet spot. We saw them. Yep. They are literally. Some what of the you most need, fish. Danikan Aquatics, is the Royal Hillstream <sighs> trout. Yeah, I was actually having a conversation with Cameron, and I was trying to talk. Cam Cameron's like, I want them. And I'm like, get them. I'm the worst person to have around people that I trust with fish. I'm like, get them, get them, get them, get them, get them. I'm totally that person. I will make you buy them. If I know you can take care of them, buy them they're so pretty though those are really nice i've had nothing but great looking and healthy fish from dan's fish totally worth the money mm -hmm. i agree it is worth the money it is the best of the best of the best With honors. did we figure out that was did someone tell us is that men in black streaming anywhere yeah I, now i want to watch I it about that greg sage and plays a mean trumpet <laughs> what a caveat you also play a mean trumpet that's rad i Wait, wish i played who? the mean who trumpet said that? Mountaintop Puffer Keeper said Greg trumpet. Sage and pl plays a mean trumpet. Well, it is only three buttons. Can't be that hard. You do it. <laughs> I want to see you do it. <laughs> that counts. Y'all saw it. That's <laughs> totally the same. Boo earns. No, my brother played the trumpet for the uh, school, like, football games and stuff. It's pretty neat. The marching band? Sure. We didn't have a marching band because there wasn't enough people in band. <laughs> When there's only like 12 people that go to your oh school, you don't God. really have marching I bands. I grew up in a real city. <laughs> like, we had large amounts of people at my school. Our marching band was the guy with like 18 instruments on him, and he's just walking around playing them all. He's like the... Like a Mary Poppins. He's like the Hormel pepperoni guy. The guy who played the one-man band guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, my school, there was a lot of a lot of people at my school, so... It's like one of the oldest high schools in Sacramento. That's cool. Uh, I've trumpet player for over 30 years. Greg is an amazing musician. That's, that's a very cool thing. That's that's pretty rad. Yeah. It's, it's always interesting to learn these There's things. a few musicians in the Fish Fam. Not that Greg Sage is in the Fish Fam, per se. I don't even know what the Fish Fam is anymore. <laughs> uh, but <laughs> This entity that I don't even know what like, it is. Anybody that does fish is in the Fish Fam. I don't know. I don't know. Oh, Caitlin said that Greg Sage was actually a band teacher. That's cool. There you go. Nice. 
Noise. See, like, why can't Seattle get Greg Sage down to do a talk? Really, though. Like, that's what, there's a guy in Sacramento, Rich Byerly. I think he used to do talks. I'm like, the people like that. Like, there's a lot of different random people that you could get that aren't that far away. I am a big fan of not having YouTubers do talks. Yeah, I think that's, because like you said, you can go watch their talks all the time. And that's coming from a YouTuber. Yeah. Cute. That was precious. <laughs> Love you more now. Hey, buddy. What are you doing? You got your bone? Curtis said my little brother Come played it's right here. the trumpet in high school and had to play taps at the Memorial Day. <laughs> dude, dude. Oh, that's awesome. I love it. I love it. Now they're going to freak out because they can't find their bone. God. Great. It's right here, buddy. Right here. Why don't you guys keep live bears again? Pain to deal with all the babies. Not worth it. No, we do keep live bears. We have live bears. We have live bears. Um, I, where I'm personally, and I don't think it, I, I don't want to speak for him, but I'm not a fan of guppies. I'm not a fan of, not a lot of I'm not a fan of a lot of different live bears, but we do have, we have, uh, like we have trout goodyids and what else do we have? We, we have, have Limias, Hawaiian right? variatus platies. We no, we have no Limias. I thought we used to. Uh, yeah. we have Dan's super awesome sunrise, something or other. Sunrise, sunset. They're pretty. They're, I mean, they're very beautiful. Uh, oh, that's me Shikori. saying it. I'm not like into them, but they're pretty. Okay, let's see if I can find them. I don't know if he still has them. Just one time at band camp. <laughs> Been a while since I've heard that. Yeah, I'm not a hater on live bears. I just don't want as prolific of live bears as guppies and endlers and all that kind of stuff. As are. soon as my local fish store closed down, I was like done with <laughs> live bears, like guppies and endlers. I've, I, there was, I couldn't get rid of them. I couldn't do anything with them. Guppies aren't a fan of me. That's also true. They, the, we had a very bad relationship when I had them. So never again. Here yeah, I don't have a problem with the guppies per se. I have a problem with how prolific they are. It's a lot. It's a lot. These are the other ones we have. Yeah. They're pretty. They're really And pretty. they look so good in outdoor tubbing. When mm -hmm. the sun hits these guys, it is phenomenal. Because you can see them. And it's the only reason I'll probably keep a couple is to put them back out in a tub this uh, spring. Otherwise, I'm shipping all the rest off to Alec. Mr. Kumanoff. Yeah, uh, is it, what is it? Timotheos Leahy? I, I had endlers. That's what I... I got endlers just because I was like, I got six. I got six endlers. I had... A hundred within a month. If I still had a local fish store, I would have, light, I would have guppies and endlers because when I had my breeding fish for profit tank, that paid for everything, all See, the food, all the supplies, all the new fish that I I was buying new fish every week just on guppies. There's too many guppy people in Sacramento, and so we all the local local fish stores were overrun with that. They wouldn't have even wanted them. Like Splash took yeah. mine because they were like homies, and they would take all my fish that I was Your guppies were homies? Splash. Uh, the people at Splash are homies. Oh, So nice. they took my fish because they were ever so nice. Oh, wait. We were doing B-roll here, weren't we? Like, we uh, were. Hmm. Christopher asks, has anyone ever been to the Aquatic Gardeners Association convention? It's in Raleigh. This and, guy. Yeah, and also, who, Regina? Did someone? I remember someone else saying that they went. I can't remember. Barbara Jackson was there. Oh, Barbara. Uh, the one in Seattle was terrible. Absolutely terrible. <laughs> but that's because it was in Seattle. and Seattle's terrible. It's, uh, it's terrible. Probably why we don't have shows in Seattle, because nobody showed up. It's a nightmare there. Why there was probably there? like 50 people. <laughs> yeah, endlers have babies during shipping. See, that's, that's a... Exactly. I had a, my, I had Bujurkina Vitata, which are yellow banded Acara, they're mouth brooders. And when I got my female from Imperial Tropicals, she came holding. She actually had fry in her mouth the entire trip. And they, most of them didn't make it. A few of them made it for a few days after she arrived, but I was pretty impressed. Zen Ginger, Matt said you had some lady operations today. I hope everything went well. Oh my God. <laughs> hope everything's going well. Glad you pointed that out. I'm sure that's. <laughs> God, the tact on this one is just ridiculous. And she had dental work done. It was a joke. Well, it's not. It's just not funny. Oh, it was funny. It's, it's funny, but it's still. To people with a sense of humor, it was funny. Yeah, well. Uh, yeah, during during <laughs> shipping, they do that. Parking was easy. <laughs> yeah, sure. Jeez. Hi. I know. When I went up to, I was like, is this the right place? 
Like, I got front row parking. I was like, this can't be right. <laughs> and then I walked into the room, and I was just like, there's like five booths here. And one of them was a co-op, which <laughs> takes up like six booths. And I was like, so what the heck is going on? And they're like, oh, there's another room. And so I went to that room, and that room was like the size of my bathroom. And I don't even have a bathroom, so I should tell you how big that was. <laughs> Arlo, what do you want, buddy? I simply said old lady I, had a procedure today. That's not how I remember it. Oh, my God. Get your facts <laughs> straight. <clears throat> rice fish. Rice fish, Tiffany. Mm -hmm. And they're platinum. Those are the platinum rice fish. There are actually blue sparkles, too, but I would say if I was to recommend a first-time rice fish, per, like someone doing rice fish for the first time, get the Platinums. They are, they seem to be, health-wise, they seem to be the most consistently healthy, and they also just look phenomenal. Speaking of summer tubbing, I'm planning on putting some blue star endlers and green jade shrimp in Ooh, one of my tubs. Pretty. And rice fish in another. Can't go wrong. Oh, that's nice. The only fish I ha still have outside are my gold white clouds that are probably, I don't even know if they're still alive. Mm, I think um, they are. I'm pretty sure I saw And only because they, they're like five years old at this point. They got to be getting close to like old age dying off. Uh, and then we still have some really poor quality rice fish out in the tubs that I don't know what to do with. They'll probably just, just live out their days in the tub. They are not attractive rice fish. It's poor, those poor rice fish. <laughs> now I'm effing dead. Thanks, Bob. Um, no, rice fish in my experience are not. I've never heard of rice fish going no. salt. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't seem right to me. No, I've I've never. I wouldn't try that. No, they're freshwater fish, like fresh freshwater. I would recommend everybody keep rice fish because I think they're amazing and just very fun to watch. And it's very interesting the life cycle and the way they carry their eggs and how they spawn. Fun to watch. Worth it. A show. They have gotten to be pretty expensive, though. I remember mm -hmm. when I first started keeping them, they were, I they were harder to find, but they were much less expensive. And now, they now are, everyone knows what they are. Yeah, now they're everywhere and they're way more expensive. And I'm like, dang, that's unfortunate. It's a really good fish to if you got a local fish store to turn in for credit. Yeah, they love them. I every yes, that is a if you want to make a little yeah, do do rice fish. And get, make sure, the only thing that I need to stress, make sure you get good rice fish. It's so easy. It's just like people think they can breed anything and go, okay, I'm going to make my, like, make sure that they're, like, the wet spot, the, ri the rice fish that they've had recently, they are just phenomenal. And I, that's the kind of breeding stock that you want. Um, do you put clams in your tubs? No, I would not do that. Mm -mm. They wouldn't make The only it. time that I've ever messed around with clams is I had a 40 breeder in my old fish room that I put clams in. Um, just because I didn't really, I wasn't really worried if they killed the fish, which clams can do. Um, but I, I would never put them in a, in something where I was intentionally trying to breed, uh, because the way like the clams, if I remember correctly, um, they lay, they somehow get their eggs in like the gills of fish and they could like starve them out or, or like suffocate them. I believe. I could be wrong, but I think that's that's how that works. BBA has four koi rice fish. Yeah, um, the red caps. Those are beautiful. I've kept those too. They're, those are fourteen dollars a piece. Is not that much. For, that's a good deal for those. Those are expensive fish. Um, are there any epistogramma that would do well in a summer tub? If your summer tub like is the same parameters that they need, then yeah. Any fish can go in a tub. It's it's just an aquarium that's not see through the same just a body of water nothing nothing changes as far as how to keep fish mm -mm. and on that note i think we're going to call it it's been an hour and a half i appreciate everyone coming out thanks for the uh super chats and the gifted memberships earlier thanks, i appreciate guys. that and uh don't forget to hit the thumbs up on your way out for i should have said this at the start of the stream because no one makes it to the end when they rewatch it but uh, if you're lurking or rewatching, let us know in the comments on what your favorite top dwellers are. Uh, everyone appreciates fish ideas for their fish tanks, so that's why we do it. Yep. And uh, otherwise, I hope you all have a great week. Go buy fish. There's links for discounts and uh, 
All the things. Non-discounts and just uh, <laughs> links to go buy stuff. So go buy stuff. It helps us out, and it costs you uh, nothing extra to support the channel <laughs> if you were already going to buy them anyways. So. Word. We appreciate it. On that note, hope you have a good week, and we will see you, as always, next Monday. New members, 3.30. Everyone else, 5 o'clock. Keep your sleeves dry and your dreams wet. <laughs> That's <Bye>. true. <laughs>